Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Fergie. Have you ever wanted to play sound or music in your apps just like this? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this part two video. We're going to go through all of the technical requirements of how to set up your API connection to play the music. So if you've not seen how to set up your document in Adobe XD, go back and check out part one and then come here to learn how to bind the data connections. Okay, let's get started. So here's the app that we were designing in part one, and I went through and showed you all of the Bravo tags. We have our app icon, our loading and our splash screens, our main homepage, which is laid out like a menu. And then the sections that we have are focus. This will go into playing a lottie animation, doing a box breath exercise. We have our sleep sounds, and this is where we're connecting to our audio via an API connection. And then we have our focus sounds, and this is where we are playing music by using the MP3 URL in the Bravo tag. So let me just remind you of how to do that. So we're going to click on our play button here because for each sound, you're going to need a separate artboard. And if I open this panel, you'll see that we have action play and this URL here of where the MP3 sound is, as well as component SVG, because with the pen icon, we know that this is a path and vector layer. So we have that for our play button on both screens. And remember each sound needs its own artboard for this to work. However, if you are wanting to create a playlist and you have loads of sounds that you're wanting to use within your app, you're wanting to play many music soundtracks, then doing this via API is probably the better way for you. So we have the same screen designs here. We have the list item once, and then we have the playing sound screen once. This is because we're going to connect this to API. So essentially, Bravo will know how many times to repeat this. It will know the sound name to insert here, the length of the audio as well. Clicking on any one of those list items will go to the actual playing screen here. Again, it will show us the sound name specific to the one that we've clicked on, as well as the length of the track, and it will play the audio. So let me show you exactly how I've set this up using Airtable as my database. So Airtable is really quick and easy to understand. So my setup here is very simple. I have one table and I have the name of the sound, the name of the music, the name of whatever it is that you want to play within your app. And then I have the URL of where exactly that is going to play from. So I'm using this Soundstock website for an example. And then I have the length of the track here. And this is all of the information that I want to be able to display on my screens for the users. So let's go over to Bravo and connect this database. Now, when you first log into Bravo, you're going to be shown your apps dashboard and you're going to want to click on this API collection little database icon over here. And we're going to create a new collection. And yep, there's an Airtable wizard. So this is going to be super easy. Simply enter the share URL and I'll show you now where to find that. Simply click share, share publicly and copy this URL here paste it into this field, hit continue, and then get your API key. So you'll find this by clicking on your user avatar, going to account, and it is this key just here. You're going to want to paste that into the field here and hit complete. Now Bravo is going to automatically connect and set this up for you. Hit continue. You can give it a name. So we're just going to call this headroom because that is the name of our app. And you can see it's pulled in all of the tables. Now I did actually have two tables, but I'm not going to be using the focus one. So I can actually just delete this. We're only using this for sleep sounds. So if I hit send here, you'll see that it is bringing back all of my data. And the important thing is to have selected all here where it says data records, because it is a list. We don't want to bring back just one of these records. Now you'll notice I don't have created time selected or this empty one here. And that's because we don't need them. Now, if we go into details and do the same thing, it's going to ask you for an ID. So let's just do the same thing we did a second ago. We can copy this ID. We can go to details, paste it here, and that will bring back that specific record for us. We can say that see that it is memories 
3 minutes 50 seconds long and has this URL. So now we know that this is all working, let's bind it to our design. So I'm headed back to my apps dashboard and clicking Headroom. I can see all of my screens are here and the ones that I need to be using right now are Sleep. So firstly, let's create our list of soundtracks. So when you click into one of your screens, you're coming into the data binding mode. Now, when you're in XD, naming your layers becomes really important because whatever name you've given it in XD is going to show up here. So I'd advise naming your layers so that this part is much easier. We're going to select the list item group, and then you're going to connect it to the database that you've just set up. So I did this earlier, so it's called Headroom Sound App. So you can see all my databases here that I've got set up with Bravo. This is the one I want to use. And then I have to tell it which request we're we going to use. So I want it to get my sleep sounds and I want it to get the list because this is a list view. And then I want it to display all records. Now within this, I want to be able to display the name and the length of the track. So now I'm going to select sound name and do the same thing, connect it to my database, use my sleep sounds list and then ask it to display the name to this here and then the length of the track here. And you'll see that these names here actually match the columns that we have here in Airtable. So I called it name, you could call it track, you could have track name and an artist name, you could have anything you want, there aren't any limits. So once I've done this, we then need to go to the sound playing screen and we need to make sure that Bravo knows to play the correct sound. So again, I'm going to select sound name and make sure that that is connected. But this time I'm going to select sleep sounds detail because I'm not selecting the list here. I'm now going into the detail of the list. So that is the differentiator here. And then I'm selecting name. Next up, I'm going to add the length of the track. And then you can see here you have some layers with lightning bolts. These are your action tags. So where you've used the action play and action pause Bravo tags, this is where you're going to get these little lightning bolts anytime you use any kind of action tab. So with the pause, we don't need to do anything there. That's going to do that automatically. But for play, we need to tell Bravo what to play. So open up this action panel here. And again, go through and select your database. So our sounds up. Sleep sounds detail, remember detail, not list. And this is where you're gonna select whichever column you have that has the MP3 URL inside. For me, it's sound URL. And that is it. That is all of the data binding we need to do to be able to play music in our app. Now that you've created your database, connected it to Bravo and bound the data to your screens, let's test it out using Bravo Vision. Once I've opened Bravo Vision, I'm gonna go ahead and select my app and I can see that my first home screen has loaded correctly. Now let's make sure that those sleep sounds actually work. I'm gonna select snooze and let's go for magical. And here's the moment of truth. We can now play and pause our music. I can close this track and I can select another one. Let's go with tomorrow. And this one also plays just fine. And just to check the other sections of the app and show you what those are like. Now this is where we've used the MP3 URL in the Bravo tag. You can see it works exactly the same. It's just where the data is sourced is different. And going into de-stress, that is just our Lottie animation to help us do a little breathing exercise. And that's our app, complete and working just fine. Now you know how to use sound and music within your app. How are you gonna be using it? And what do you want to learn next? Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.